Hi, I'm Tom Stevenson and welcome to Microsoft Project Made Easy. We talk about Microsoft Project in this video series and if you are new to Microsoft Project you might want to go back and look at some of the first videos and I'll provide some links in the description below and you can sort of walk through from beginning to end. In this particular video, I just thought I'd just talk about task basics and the different types of tasks that are in Microsoft Project. Sometimes even if you're an advanced user, you forget certain aspects of what tasks can do. And if you're a new user, this can be also be helpful in giving you a good introduction to um, what tasks are and how Microsoft Project uses them. So I've just taken my screen here and I've typed in five tasks. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make my uh, text a little bit bigger so you can see it a little bit better. So I'm just going to go to Format Textiles and I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see more of it. There you go. Now it'll be much more visible. I'm going to put in some durations. Well, the first thing you'll notice is I typed in task one, two, three, four, five uh, just to identify some names. And you notice that it has this little box here and it says task mode. Well, in, in Microsoft Project from 2010 going forward, it has this choice that you have task mode, which is manually scheduled or auto scheduled. You typically want to have things in auto schedule mode so that it will automatically schedule things and move things around so that you see um, what's going on with your project. If you don't right now, um, you can't even see the task. Uh, if I put a, a duration, uh, like uh, one day, it'll appear kind of faded, faded out because it's in manual mode. Now, usually I don't want to be doing this every time, switching back and forth from task mode uh, in the manual and uh, auto schedule. So usually what I will do is, well, number one, if you did a whole bunch and you want to fix them, the quick way to fix them is you just highlight everything and you go to task and everything about tasks is under this task tab or a lot of it is and you go to auto schedule and that would auto schedule everything. So if you had 5,000 activities, it'll make sure all of them are auto scheduled at that point. Uh, for new activities, if you want new activities to be auto scheduled, you go down to the bottom left corner where it says manually scheduled now and you say new tasks, auto schedule. So if I put in a new task like task six, it will not be manual schedule, it'll be auto schedule. If I want to change them all, as I said, I'll just click on that square icon box. Under the task tab, I'll click on auto schedule and now they're all auto schedule. You see the question marks? Well, the question marks just means I never really put in a duration. I just pressed enter. So it, the program's telling me, is this what you really want? And so maybe I'll just put in some different numbers here. I'll put one, two, oh, I'll put um, uh, two. I think I put a D in there instead of a two and I'll put in three and maybe two, maybe I'll put one and two again. So I just put in a bunch of durations and of course it shows it all starting on today's date. Uh, I have to have them uh, starting on different dates. I'm not gonna start everything on the same date. So the question is, well, what's the relationship types that I wanna put in? And that has to do with predecessors. And so I can essentially put in the number which would be in this case row number. So I'll just put in number one here. And of course it links and moves um, the activity over. Or I can just highlight quickly one after the other. And I can go to task and link them. And that'll link one after the other in these types of tasks. So there's relationship types. And for in other videos, I go over the different types of relationships. This is the default finish to start relationship. So task one has to finish before task two can actually start. As I said, I wanna go over some task fundamentals though uh, in this video. So there's a few other things that you may or may not be aware of, even if you're uh, a relatively frequent user. You can split tasks. So if I didn't, if I say I wanted task two, uh, they were going to do one day of work and then they weren't going to work for a few days and then they're going to work on it again. I could actually select this split button over here. And once I select that, you see this little split box comes up. If I hover over, I can just sort of grab it and pull it a couple of days. Let's say I mean, a little bit more till Tuesday. Um, if I go a little bit more there, Wednesday. And so that splits it to the Wednesday. So the two days duration, I've got one day on Friday 
and one day on Wednesday and it's not counting anything in between. This can be quite useful uh, when you get into updating a schedule. If you have somebody, they showed up for two days and then they disappeared for a week. If you're in construction, you see that a lot, you know, so they, they show up, they do a bit of work and then maybe they get another job and they don't come back for two or three days. Well, you could show the split to indicate that they weren't on site. The other thing is if you've added cost to the schedule, when you split a task, it's only going to count the working time. It's not going to count this split time over here on Monday and Tuesday, which is better than just making it longer, uh, which would count any kind of cost that you may have applied um, to the various activities. So again, that's splitting it. Now, if you made a mistake and you didn't want it to be split, you can just pull it back and it really um, corrects that. So again, I just click on the split icon. I uh, pull it at the end of Friday. Maybe I pull it to Thursday this time. And because everything is, uh, oh, didn't quite get there. Let's see if I can pull it to Thursday. There you go. Uh, and so now it also pulls everything else that it's linked to, right? Because you've made these link signals to that. If for some reason you didn't want this one to move as much, you could always put a negative lag on that. You could double click on the link there and you could put a minus one day and that would pull it back a one day. Um, for those of you that work in heavy civil where they don't like negative lags, uh, they like start to start, you would have to put a start to start from the beginning relationship, uh, which again, if I double click on that link line there, I could say, all right, well, I want a start to start relationship and I want to make that Let's see, I want to make that plus, right? So I want to make that plus uh, one, two, three, four, I think. If I'm wrong, I can always change it. There you go, start to start, right? And then I could also have um, maybe uh, a, put a, a tie from this activity back here if I wanted to, um, so if, to close it off. So I could maybe tie this activity to um, activity, let's see, that's activity four. So I could say three, two comma three and so now I've also got that tied up that link there too so that um, you don't have any open ends in play all right so that's just giving you a little bit of ideas about tasks now another one that people are often not aware of is you can have a recurring task a recurring task is one that happens over and over again so you can go to the task icon over here under the task tab and you can pull this down you see where it says recurring task well, if I click on that, it gives me uh, this recurring task box and I can put uh, site safety uh, meetings and I can say that those are going to occur on um, Monday, Mondays, and they're going to occur weekly. I could say daily if I want them every day. If it's once a month, I could put monthly. And so recur every week. You could have it every second week. You know, if you change that to number two, you got pretty much full adjustability there. And you could say up here that it's going to take one hour, one H. Uh, and uh, you want it, by default, it will start at the beginning of the project and end by the end. So if you want something to go the whole range of the project, um, it will fit in between those two um, lines, the start and finish, the current start and finish. Uh, so if I did that, site safety meetings, and I say Monday, uh, one hour. I could say also I only want it to happen two times uh, and, or three times. Three times would be within that default or end by a certain date. You have all of those um, choices as well. So I'm going to click OK here. And it should put in this little box here that is showing me the different ones when they're going to occur, the start date, the finish date, the time period is going to be one hour. And uh, that's your recurring task. It creates a summary task with these built underneath it. The reason it says 10.13 days, well, I said that these are hours. So this always gives you from when you started to when you finish. So really, this is going to be um, crossing 10 and one eighth days because one hour one eighth is 0.125 if you round 0.125 off it gives you 10.13 that's where the 0.13 um, comes from uh, and it only counts it only ever counts working days so always remember that with tasks so that's a recurring task kind of neat that you can use for some things 
I wouldn't really use that to attach to actual project items, but I do use it for things like meetings or something that I have that's going to happen a few times um, recurring that way. I use it, to be honest, all the time uh, when I schedule uh, and I'm doing some training for uh, private uh, uh, clients and I'm going to train for the next 10 weeks. I'll put down that this client, my training is uh, Tuesday afternoons, right, one to four, and I'll say it's going to happen for the next 10 Tuesdays, and then it will show that blocked up in here. So I can get quite com complex with that. Believe me, if you saw my uh, personal schedules on that, you'd see that it's, it gets quite complex, but it's actually pretty easy to follow that way. So anything that repeats itself over and over again, it works um, super well for from that perspective. Uh, the other thing is, well, another type of task, of course, is a milestone task, right? So we could just say uh, that we want task seven here. The easiest way that I always do a milestone is I just go in and I just say zero days. Uh, but we could, um, we could say add a milestone, all right? And so if I go add a milestone, it just inserts a whole row that's a milestone. Uh, I could have just sit, done the same thing by saying zero here in task seven. And it also creates a milestone. That's usually the way I do do that. But if you just want to insert one, you could just click on milestone and uh, it will insert a milestone right above wherever you're at. Um, so that makes it pretty uh, simple to do that from that perspective. The other thing with tasks a lot of people don't know is if you wanted to move it to a specific spot, you can move the task one week, uh, four weeks, custom, um, however many days from where it's currently located, you can do that. Uh, if you're updating a schedule you and you have a status date line that you put in, you can move the incomplete parts to the status date. Uh, you can also move completed parts to the status date. So if you want to do that um, as well, um, that can be um, helpful uh, too. The only problem with that uh, that I'm usually not too thrilled with is it puts a constraint on the activity. And uh, the activity or the task, uh, a constraint just is locking it into place. So I tend to not like that. For task five, you can open this cell box and you'll see a calendar and you can select a date, right? And you say, oh, this is cool. I can select a date and it says move the task, remove the link, move the task, keep the link. So if I want to keep the link going, the relationship going, I click OK. And that's fine, that puts that there, but if I actually am uh, in my uh, entry view and I pull this little box to the bottom here, you'll see a, a little uh, icon appear and it says, this task has a start no earlier than constraint. And that means it can't start any earlier than that date I selected. So I'm not a big fan of putting constraints. Uh, because it kind of locks you into position and for example if I go to the format screen and I turn on critical tasks it doesn't show that the activities before are critical anymore because I've locked this in it's kind of showing that things beyond that are critical but not things before that which I find uh, problematic in lots of ways so I try to avoid constraints as much as possible if you need to remove a constraint that you put on it by accident, you just double click on the activity and you can go to the advanced task box and you can say constraint type as soon as possible. As soon as possible is the default and that means there's no constraint. So as soon as possible is the default, no constraint. And now you see, you can see the critical path is back. You can see that everything's in alignment and you don't see that little box over there. Uh, so that's the problem that I also was mentioning that if you move a task using this box and I say I want to move task five um, ahead uh, one week, it moves it. But again, it puts a constraint there. It does the same thing. Uh, so that's why I'm not such a, a big fan of that. But I do like using it when I do updates and I want to sort of move something to the status date. Sure, it puts a constraint there, but it's right at the status date. Everything else is done up to that point. So in that, that case, it's I think it's a, it's a good e exception to the rule. Um, not everybody agrees with that. That's why Microsoft Project has it that you can put all these various constraints. And I'm not saying never put a constraint, but sometimes... 
uh, you have to be careful that you're not putting very many. I try to avoid them wherever possible because it does sort of log jam the free flow. And the whole point is you've got this free flow and you're, you're always iterating projects and schedules and you want to have a good idea of what's going on with your projects and schedules that way. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover just on these little bits on how you can enter tasks. Uh, entering durations is pretty straightforward. Uh, if your uh, program is set up in the options for days, if you just put a number it, and press enter, it will put days. If you wanted weeks, of course, you would use like one W for weeks and uh, one M will give you minutes, one H will give you hours, one M O will give you months. So that's our quick tutorial on activities and tasks and how you can actually enter them. A few little things to recap. Again, you can do a recurring task uh, in case you have things like meetings. And that's why I usually don't enter those as uh, parts of my actual project. I usually save it for things like meetings and not really connected up to the rest of the projects. Again, I don't like all these constraints uh, that uh, sort of uh, lock things up that way. Zero makes it a milestone. So making a task zero makes it a milestone. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial. I'm Tom Stevenson and if you did enjoy it, please click subscribe and notifications for new updates and you can see a whole bunch of other videos to do with construction, construction project management, as well as Microsoft Project on my YouTube channel playlist. See you next time. Bye for now.